Hello, my name is Trevor Canham, and I'm an early career researcher currently at York University in Toronto. I study color perception models, and I make use of them in color imaging tools, and I use the color imaging tools as an environment to test color perception models. Today I'm going to be talking about a music video that I recently did color correction for using a style transfer tool that we developed at the Spanish National Research Council. Before I get into the music video itself and the workflow, I just wanted to first introduce the topic of style transfer. We're presenting here a software code base for this, this style transfer method. We also have a paper that's under revision for publication. All of these things are going to be linked in the description as well as the, the full music video itself. So you can quickly jump off to each of those things and, and try things out for yourself. But for those of you who aren't familiar with the concept of style transfer, the idea is to take some sort of reference image, extract features corresponding to its style, and apply them to the content of a source image. So this is um, a process which is really amenable for color grading workflows, mostly because when you're color grading an image, you usually have some other image in mind that you would like it to look like or um, you take inspiration from, from something else. It could be from a real life visual experience. However, most of the time, you're, everything is within the image domain. So you're taking inspiration from another movie that you have nostalgia for or, or um, some other image that you'd seen before. And you use manual tools to sort of replicate the look of, of another situation. However, there's been tons of automatic tools for doing this, um, for automatically transferring the color grading style of a, of a reference onto a source. However, they've been quite problematic. There's been a lot of artifacts and there's been problems with how easy it is to integrate them into the workflow. So um, the novelty of our approach is to bring something which um, is really exceptionally good at matching the visual appearance of a reference image um, and applying it to the to a source or matching the visual appearance of a source image to a reference image and is also extremely amenable for integration into current color grading workflows because it allows you to extract a simple um, style transfer lookup table and which you can obviously take into any color editing or um, uh, color grading or image editing tool that you use. The other thing which is really great about our, our method is its interpretability. So artists' tools should be something that they can understand fully and become fluent with. Um, it should become like an extension of their body if it's a really good artistic tool. Um, it doesn't shouldn't be completely automatic, but it should be predictable, and it should what it does should make sense. So the reason why our tool makes sense is because we extract features which are semantically relevant to um, the sort of things that colors generally work with, which are brightness and color balance. We extract contrast properties. We extract whether the image is high key or low key. And we extract the information pertaining to how much the image is clumped up at the absolute white point and at the absolute black point. So dealing with the black and white limits, high key, low key, contrast and brightness, are basically the the axes that um, colorists work on and our tool allows for them to address those things directly via decoupled statistics, which is the major mathematical novelty that is part of our tool. We have a whole journal article about this called Using Decoupled Features for Photorealistic Style Transfer. A preprint of this is already available. Um, we're working on revisions on it right now. We're about to update that preprint as well. And we're going to get into exactly how this tool works, but first we'll present the music video, then um, how we use the this tool within the music video's workflow, um, which made everything very easy, by the way. Um, and then finally present some experiments to give you a better idea of how this works. So without further ado, I present to you 
Georgia by Public Water Supply. Johnny boy working on the docks on those long hot summer days. He's gotta get his money or make his old lady happy and get the rent paid. Well, after that work week's over, he finds his pusher man working out at the corner. He always finds him when he can. That. He's a dancing fool with a long-legged lady sitting better means to Going out, burning holes in his shoes on the dance floor He can shake the blues when he can't help him dissipating Big strong man that he's gotta be So he goes and gets inebriated He dances with every pretty thing he sees I said, just for the night You tell him If you wanna be my So that's a little preview. You can look at the whole music video if you click the link in the description. Um, and what we have going on here is we have a man with a sort of duality. Um, he's got this sort of stifling home life situation going on. And he's got an escape from that, basically. There's a lot of great dancing going on in both cases. But these are obviously very different scenes that we have to treat quite differently in the color correction process or we should have to treat differently or there's different goals let's say so now I'm going to get into how we went from this the original footage here presented in the Sony log format with all of the beautiful details very flat compressed there all ready to work with like putty in my hands and eventually got to this and actually a very short time. So um, I'm using DaVinci Resolve here, but you can do this in whatever color editing platform you want. Um, basically, what I did to start was just go through the music video itself and select a few moments that really stuck out visually from each of the scenes that I could then grab a still, export that still and bring into my style transfer tool. So I won't go through all of that just for time's sake, but I have them here already. Um, opening up our tool on the, the GitHub, or sorry, on the GitHub, there's all sorts of information about how to install it and everything like that. Uh, but once it's installed, you just click on the source folder and then you pick your target folder where your target images are once you pick these you'll already be in the directory where you want to be or where you recently just picked your images from so that's all set now you have a list of all the images in that directory for the source and the target generally what I do for these workflows is I'll take a, a list of all of these um, well I'll bring all of these stills together and then I'll have a whole bunch of references that I pick and then you never know what can happen so you can just quickly compute the result of, of a certain reference still pair and come up with something so working with this image I had all of these, uh, just from Google Images, these cinema billiards. So I, that was my prompt that I looked up. I wanted billiards in the cinema. So I can compute um, what it looks like to apply the visual appearance of this target onto the source. I'm not crazy about that result. Um, I got into all of these images from the recent film Spencer which had this really stunning billiard scene which came up in my search and it, I reminded me of it. Um, I remember sitting in the theater and seeing it and um, it, it really striking me visually. So I'm, I'm really into this result here. 
Um, so I just save this as a lookup table and through the process of integrating lookup tables into Resolve, which you can just Google, um, I bring this into the onto the full video and lo and behold, it looks really nice. And um, this, this simple transform sort of knocks the whole video into place aside from some strange transitions between between shots. In particular, in the home scene, we have some very different color balances from shot to shot that I wanted to address. We come back home here at the end as well. I want to use this sort of as my reference for the rest of the home scene so I can take a still of that. And the other issue that I wanted to point out was um, in the band shots, we have some very cool color temperatures on the for the members on the right side of the band, where on the other side is very warm. So I grabbed a still of this guy, my friend Alex here, and still of the whole band, and just picked some things out of there to try out some other things and, and come up with a look for that. So I bring those stills back into the into the style transfer tool. Pull those up. Here we want to have a working folder as well, which I'm going to explain in a second why. And we'll start first with the, the band. So. We have this shot of Alex, which is a bit too cool. And we have a shot of the full band, which we want to sort of integrate. We're cutting between these two shots. We want them to look visually similar. That's the beauty of this method, is it's going to make these two things really um, hit your eye in the same way, let's say. Um, so even though Alex doesn't look perfectly the same in both of these shots, it's not really going to strike the viewer as something that's uh, um, jarring, whereas this shot definitely does. So we'll take the lookup table from this and, and move on. For the home shots, it was a little bit more diff difficult, but it's a great um, excuse to sort of show off the different features here. If I compute the transform directly between these two, we can see that the result is too blue because we have this really strong influence from the window. Outdoor light is generally more blue than indoor light. So that's the result of that. So what I can do here is I can take the common elements, elements between the source and reference image, isolate them via cropping. So I don't want the window here and I don't want the door from the other image. I just want, I just want him our hero um, and we can extract the transform here and then apply it to the full working image. So um, let's see what happens there. So this also is not really what I want. It's doing a lot of weird things with the contrast, but remember we were only trying to get to um, dealing with the, with the color balance. And most of that is, with the mean. So I, I went through earlier that our tool is touching brightness, contrast, whether the image is high key or low key, and the blacks and whites, and we'll get into exactly how it's doing that in a moment. But basically, by taking the statistics of the image, these are generally what are, what are controlling those four things um, in that order. So for controlling the color balance and the brightness, we really only need to transfer the mean. So when we compute that, this is really, um, looks a lot like the original image. However, it's now got this, doesn't have the pink color balance anymore and it's matching the color balance from the end. So we can save a lookup table for that as well and move on. So with those corrections, things were mostly done. There were some really minor manual corrections that I made as well towards the end, but from that, it was basically all keyed in, and um, anyone who does color correction can probably say that that's 
quite a bit easier than doing everything manually um, and didn't take very much time at all. And it leaves time open for creativity and spending more time with um, making the look and, and experimenting with stuff. So that's a really cool thing. So going back to the tool itself, we mentioned that we have these four features that colorists like to look at and play with that are exactly what we're uh, transferring with our method. So this diagram here shows what happens when you transfer each one of the methods or each one of those features in succession, matching to the reference, which is on the right here, the target or reference and the source on the left. So we can see that when we match the mean value on each of the individual color channels to this target, we get the color balance of the target, but that's it. And it's a really dramatic change compared to the source. You can see as we add additional moments, the change is more and more subtle. Once we add the variance, we get the contrast properties of the um, target image already there. By adding the skew, then we start to um, transfer whether the image is a high key or low key image, that's um, whether the image is more weighted towards the highlights or more weighted towards the shadows, that gets applied. But we can see that in doing that, sometimes we clip some details, like for instance in the third row here, I'll zoom in. We start to lose some details in the sky here in order to obtain that sort of high key look that, that this image gives us. So then by having a decoupled matching of the kurtosis element, kurtosis measuring the degree to which the image is bunched up at the um, whites or blacks, by matching that, we sort of continue to refine this. Um, and with those four things, we're really getting at the main tone scale regions um, and tone scale qualities that colors are looking to touch. So that's a really cool thing. Um, we have a lot of experiments that we presented in this paper comparing to other alternatives. These are just some, uh, using the full method, some outstanding transforms that, that we did, as well as some uh, really great uses of the cropping feature where the full target image were either underexposing or overexposing our source image, where we can limit the analysis to just the features of the target that we really want to look into. And obviously we did a bunch of tests against other methods in the field, which um, if you're interested in, you can always check out the paper. Again, that'll be linked in the description. The archive preprint's already available. And so the final thing to cover, I guess, is just how this method exactly achieves this effect of having a, a similar visual experience or a similar visual impression of the target image onto the source. So I did, I made this little experiment, um, just basically taking four unrelated images, four images with unrelated content, doing a full style transfer match between them and then gradually transitioning between the original image and then the style transfer version before cutting to the next one. So I'll just play this quickly. So you can see this, the color is starting to shift. There's a lot of blue coming in and there's going to be a transition soon and just pay attention to the image. So the content's completely different now but you can see at that transition there's it's kind of soft um on the eye so pay attention so the content's completely different but the visual impression is is quite similar and there's actually a really strong vision science basis for this which is that the adaptation processes which react to images are reacting, some might say, to some very basic features of the image, which include the statistics that we're looking at. 
So for instance, your brightness adaptation is going to react to the mean value of the image that you're looking at. It's going to center around that value for the purpose of efficiency, which we explain in greater detail in the paper itself. And the same is true of contrast adaptation. It's going to center around some sort of measurement of contrast. And yeah, these features are quite important for how you perceive an image. And there's only a few of them, so each of them makes a big impact. So that's all I have. Thank you so much to my co-authors, Adrian Martin, Marcelo Bertamillo, and Javier Portilla. Thank you very much to my collaborators on the music video, Natalie Marino and Matt Alchin. Um, Natalie did an amazing job directing this, the choreography and everything. And Matt Alchin shot it very, very wonderfully, made my job quite easy. And thanks to Public Water Supply for making this awesome music and, and having me along for the ride. So thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope that you have an amazing day and um, I'll see you soon, hopefully. Bye-bye.